Hello, my lovely second grade friends. I have been anxiously waiting to see what happens with the Wild Robot Escapes since we stopped last week so close to it being finished. And so um, I didn't get to send out a video on Monday, so I'm recording it um, Monday evening so that I can send it out on Tuesday for you. And so we can see together what's going to happen. And so if you can hear our, my dog barking in the background, Scotch is excited too. He wants to know what's going to happen. So chapter 87, The Homecoming. The airship's door hummed open and our robot stepped outside. Everything was still and silent, but Roz knew hidden animals were watching and she greeted them with a mighty roar. Animals of the island, I have returned. I may look different, but I promise you, I am your old friend, Roz. Her words boomed across the island, but the only response was her own voice echoing back. The wild robot needed to be wilder. So she reached down and started smearing handfuls of mud across her body. Then she pressed clumps of weeds and flowers into her muddy coating until she looked more like her old wild self. Brightbill fluttered out from the airship and perched on Roz's shoulder. He shook his tail feathers and squawked. It's true, this robot is my mother. Come see for yourselves. Silence. And then bushes began to rustle. Faces began poking out from the trees. Animals began scurrying and trotting and flying into the meadow. At first, they moved cautiously, confused, as to how this new robot could be their old friend. But they saw her wild appearance and they heard her wild voice, and news began spreading across the island. Roz was back. A crowd of friendly creatures gathered around our robot. There was Brightbill's flock, and the beaver and deer families, and Fink the fox, and Swooper the owl. Bears came lumbering down from the hills, and fish jumped up from the ponds, and the vultures circled above. Even the nocturnal creatures crawled out from their burrows into the daylight to join the celebration. Oh, how good it feels to return from a long journey and find your friends and family waiting for you. But reader, sometimes we return to find things that aren't exactly as we left them. As you know, the wilderness can be a harsh place, and while Roz was away, it had claimed its share of her friends. The robot saw the raccoons, Lumpkin and Bumpkin, but not Rumpkin. Nor did she see Broadfoot the moose or dig down the groundhog. Other creatures were missing as well. And so, like many of our homecomings, this one was bittersweet. Chit Chat the squirrel came bounding through the grass, chattering and on and on as usual. I always knew you'd come back to us, Roz, but I never imagined you'd gain so much weight. Although I guess I've gained a little weight myself. Anyway, you'll have to tell me all about your adventures when you get a chance. I'm sorry for talking so much. I'm just so excited to see you again. Geese and beavers and deer and fish and squirrels and owls and bears and turtles and otters and raccoons and woodpeckers and possums, and the moose and foxes, every kind of creature from every corner of the island, were coming to welcome back their dear friends, Roz and Brightbill. And watching it all from the airship was Dr. Malovo. Chapter 88, The Final Farewell. Everyone, I would like you to meet the woman who designed me. Roz walked over to the strange creature standing by the ship's doorway. For most of the island animals, this was their first time seeing a human. They squinted and sniffed and whispered to each other, trying to understand how such a frail old woman could create such a big, strong robot. Dr. Malovo started speaking softly to Roz, and then Roz started speaking loudly to the crowd of animals. My designer has asked me to translate her words for you, said the robot. The following words are not mine. They are hers. The crowd settled down and listened. Thank you, island animals, for saving Roz. Without your help, she would have died here long ago. But you were not only her rescuers, you were also her teachers. You taught her to be wild. 
and she needed all of her wildness to survive, both in your world and in mine. As I look around at this wild paradise, I finally understand why Roz tried so hard to get back here. She does not belong with robots and humans. She belongs here on this island with all of you. We cannot risk others learning about this place. That is why I will soon leave and never return. But I promise to keep your Ireland a secret so that all of you can live in peace. And I will spend the rest of my days filled with wonder at the miracle that is our wild robot. The meadow fell silent. A flurry of wing beats and Bright Bill landed in the grass near Dr. Malovo. He gazed up at the woman, deep into her eyes, and he bowed his head. Then the other geese in his flock bowed their heads. Crown Point, the buck, bowed his head. Pinktail, the possum, bowed. Mr. and Mrs. Beaver, the lizards, bowed, followed by the turtles and the frogs. Like a wave, rolling through the crowd, more animals bowed their head. They were showing respect for the woman who had created their dear friend Roz and who had brought her back to them. Dr. Malovo turned to Roz. Do you understand why I can't return? She said, her eyes glistening. It's for your own good. I understand, said the robot. I only wish we'd gotten to know each other a little better. Dr. Malovo smiled and pulled Roz into a hug. She didn't mind the robot's coat of mud and grass. Wrapped in each other's arms, they both felt something like love. You're the wild robot, said the woman. Go be wild. Dr. Malovo stepped aboard her airship and the door hummed close. A moment later, the engines fired up and the crowd of wild creatures backed away. Then the ship rose above the island, turned to the south and disappeared into the sky. So Dr. Malovo returned to the city and Roz got to stay on the island with all of her friends where she would be safe now because the people wouldn't know that there was someone that was different. They were afraid of her. Our story ends on an island where a robot was returning to her wild way of life. Roz had escaped from the world of humans and now she was free to be her true self again. She could think and speak and do whatever she desired. And right now, what she desired was simply to watch the sunset. With Brightbill on her shoulder, Roz hiked past trees and meadows and streams and climbed up, up, up the mountain to the very highest point on the island. Then our friends sat on the slanted rocks of the peak and watched the sun slowly sink behind the ocean. If you're like me, reader, you still have a lot of questions. How long will Roz live? Will she ever see another human or another robot? What joys and sorrows lie ahead for her? But still, Roz had these questions too. Now she also had some answers. Our robot knew where she came from. She knew the life she was supposed to live and she knew the life she wanted to live. As Roz sat with Brightbill, she slowly turned her head, scanning the island and taking it all in. The last rays of sunlight streaked across the treetops below. Animals scurried through the shadows. The air was fresh with the scent of flowers and of salt water. The sky began darkening and the crickets began chirping and the stars began twinkling. Everything was just right. Roz felt safe and happy and loved. The wild robot was home. And here's the picture of Roz sitting and watching the sunset with Brightbill on her shoulder. Now we got to discover what happened with Roz. There's an epilogue. An epilogue is where it adds something to the ending to help wrap up the story. And we're gonna find out what happened on Hilltop Farm to Jaya and to Jad and to the, to the children who helped Roz. Autumn had returned to Hilltop Farm. The pasture was coated with frost, but the cows were out there, grazing on the last few tufts of fresh grass. Soon they'd stroll up to the parlor for another milking. Their routine never changed. Mr. Sharif was sitting in his pickup truck with his dog. The man stared out the window across the fields at the new robot. 
He was keeping a close eye on her. Tech Lab had promised him this one would not run away, but he didn't trust her yet. These days, the children spent most of their free time working on the farm. Jaya had a way with the cows. Jad liked the tools and the machines. They were walking through the farm buildings together when they heard honking sounds in the sky and a flock of geese glided down to the pond. For weeks, geese had been stopping by on their migrations, but there was something different about this flock. They flew in a perfect formation and they were led by a small, graceful goose. The, fo the flock calmly floated on the water after a while, the leader shook his tail feathers, beat his wings, and fluttered over to Jaya and Jad. The goose stood in front of the children. He gazed deep into their eyes. Then he craned his neck around, plucked out one of his feathers, and laid it on the ground by their feet. Who do you think that might be, children? Think it's Bright Bell? Jaya and Jad looked at each other and smiled. The children had been waiting for this moment. They had always wanted to know how Roz's story would end, and now they finally knew. The wild robot was back where she belonged. What a wonderful story. Roz had to adapt and change, and she was willing to learn so much about the animals that were on the island so that she could get along with them. And they knew that she was different at first, but they saw how kind she was and how she, even as a robot, she never wanted to hurt someone. She was, her job was to help people. Um, there's this note about the story at the back that the author, Peter Brown, wrote. And so we're going to take a uh, listen to the note about the story, about what his thoughts were. He says, what would an intelligent robot do stranded in the wilderness? How might a robot adapt to the natural environment? Could a robot ever be truly wild? Those are some of the questions that inspired me to create a character named Roz and to write my first novel, The Wild Robot. But I had more questions. What would happen if Roz were taken away from the wilderness? How might the wild robot react to normal robots and to humans? Could she ever fit into a civilized world? The questions kept coming, and yet there was one question I returned to again and again. Where does the wild robot truly belong? Does Roz belong on the island where she spent her first year of life? Does she belong in civilization, working for humans? I imagined her feeling torn between the natural world and the civilized world. I also imagined, if given the choice, Roz would choose to live with her wild animal friends and family, but would she have a choice? Obviously, I needed to explore these ideas by writing a sequel, and aren't you glad he did? A sequel in which Roz finds her way back home. The story had to be filled with heart and soul and action and science and even a little philosophy. I had to develop a new character and settings, and everything had to take place in the future. This new story was tricky, like a puzzle, where all the pieces had to fit together perfectly. I read expert predictions of what the future might look like. I studied robotics and automation and artificial intelligence. I began to envision a futuristic society where humans live comfortably, thanks to the tireless work of robots. And there was Roz, in the middle of that society, using her wildness in new ways to escape from her new life the, and to find her old one. The puzzle pieces started fitting together and after several years of researching and thinking, I finally had my second novel for children, The Wild Robot Escapes. And what a wonderful story. I enjoyed reading both The Wild Robot and The Wild Robot Escapes. And I hope that you enjoyed the story too. So now we'll have to um, come up, I'll come up with a new story that we can enjoy together as a class. So um, hopefully when we meet on Zoom next, we can visit and you can share some of your ideas about the story. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.